Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, February 8th, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We have any time for change call tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to talk about financial structure amongst a few other things. When we hurry, we don't have patience. We lose patience. Attention span on this planet is small. And the key to everything is patience. You get the chicken by hatching the egg, not by smashing it. Arnold Glasgow. We get in the rush mode and the rush mode comes in it's like a little sliver of energy it comes in and and most of us aren't aware of it when it comes in and we begin to speed up what we're doing our activities actions we feel compressed uh Stress. Little, it starts at first. Little, not a lot. And it comes in, it takes us over, and then we're on the racetrack. Now, it's, it's interesting because currently on this planet, one cannot hurry the ripening process of fruit, force a baby to develop faster or reach a state of deep inner peace within oneself. Reaching a state of deep inner peace within oneself is a constant. Um, but the rest of that will become outdated, I'll say it that way. There is a divine timing embedded within the matrix of creation. Every thought, feeling, action, and world, word, spoken, has a natural flow that's fully aligned with the entire cosmos. The cycles of the seasons, planets, stars, even galaxies, are a macrocosmic perspective of this divine inner alignment. There is a synchronized perfection hidden in everything, everywhere you go. The tomato falls naturally from the vine when it is ripe. But sometimes the tomato is too ripe. You ever notice that? Any of you have grown any tomatoes? Sometimes they're picked when they're ripe. And if you let them fall to the ground in the garden, a lot of times they don't end up too good. Now, just like our egos, the fruit naturally knows when it needs to hold on a little longer, when it's it's the right time to let go. When we learn how to live, When this civilization learns how to live in each moment of our lives fully, feeling deeply into our vulnerabilities and being intimately connected, we naturally live in divine harmony with the world, the whole world, this solar system, this galaxy, and this universe by simply choosing to live each day in a relaxed, peaceful body. How many of us do you believe have gotten there, you know, to choosing to live each day in a truly relaxed, peaceful body? The natural harmonious alignment inside of us adheres to the perfect timing happening throughout this universe. Full bodily relaxation is a moment-to-moment awareness practice that simply boils down to being with what is. Can you say to yourself that 
you are being with what is. No judgment, no pre-recollections, nothing. Just being with what is. Now, when we get to rush bug, it can happen to us in the morning, can happen to us in the middle of the day. Something triggers a response mechanism within these bodies. And what is it connected to? It's connected to we all have been programmed by other people's thoughts. Where do you think we get our personality and character? in these bodies from other people's thoughts. Because culmination, some of the things we choose to carry with us, others we forget about. But all in all, like I've stated before, we're on this big, massive merry-go-round. So whether it's our innermost critical thoughts about ourselves or our excited hot feelings about the new love in our lives, by being with your experience fully, you naturally become patient and in tune with the cosmic timing behind everything. Following this daily conscious practice, we can truly see how the world, this world, is perfect and everyone is a part of this perfection exactly as they already are. What dictates to us? Society. Who created the society? We did. Is, the, is our social structure, does it support self-respect? Does it support respect for others? Does it support loving ourselves and others? Does it support true, deep, eternal peace and loving? It's a culmination. It's actually a, a mixture of people teaching people. No matter what the information, because remember, we're empty vessels when we enter these bodies. These shy, these baby bodies are empty. It's it's, uh, it's wide open. You know, it's an empty tank waiting to be filled up with information by other people. Anything, we be, anything you believe you have to do or become before you can be free is a denial and distraction from the truth that you are already free. Alan Cohen. Anything you believe you have to do or become before you can be free is a denial and distraction from the truth that you are already free. Now, an interesting fact is that this Earth, call it our Earth, is moving around our sun at, at the perfect speed of 67,000 miles per hour. If suddenly it decided to move any faster, we would all be thrown off. So no matter how crazy your life is, it's already happening at 67,000 miles per hour. So you don't need to live it any faster. Just another good reason to take your time. Learn how to slow down and enjoy the ride. We experience impatience. Why? Why do we experience impatience? I don't think any of us are exempt from it. Because the mind gets attached to a future idea. That's why. That's why we experience impatience. Because the mind gets attached to a future idea. It makes, it makes up a story that says, if I'm late for my very important meeting, then they will be disappointed. I won't get the promotion. I will not fulfill my life's dreams. The mind starts to create the fearful reality of somehow being separated 
from the divine cosmic order of everything. Every situation in this life is according to divine timing. However, when the mind believes life should be a certain way in the future, fitting our current schedule into this time frame just becomes our next new experience of suffering. Teach your mind to say, no matter what happens, I'm always on divine time. Even if I'm 20 minutes late, it's for the best. And life knows what's best for me. No matter what happens, I am always on divine time. Even if I'm 20 minutes late, it's, the, it's for the best. And life knows what's best for me. This accepting, compassionate attitude always creates more patience. We just don't know why we had to be late. Perhaps a horrific 10-car accident was avoided by showing up 20 minutes later that day. There's always a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Now, the mind will always create problems the more attached we become to its ideas. However, the bigger question here is, how often are we conscious of divine timing of everything? How often are we conscious of the divine timing of everything? Are we sensitive to feeling this highly intelligent energy? that is orchestrating everything behind the scenes with the most loving care and precision. Once our awareness is consistently turning into this great perfection, our daily lives begin to emulate the divine synchronicity everywhere we go. He that can have patience can have what he will, Benjamin Franklin. Now some people, boy, I wish I had more patience. You ever, you ever said that? Or you ever heard anybody say it? If and when you want more patience in your life, you must choose to first look and see where your impatience is coming from. Where is it coming from? Why am I impatient? Why do, we, why do we need to hurry and rush against the sacred timing of this awesome divinity? Just who do we think we are? All impatience is an ego-based pattern that stems from not choosing to be vulnerable, sensitive to this life, and listening to the highest divine flow of each living moment. Ego is established by an unconscious pattern attempting to resist or control everything that is. Ego is established by an unconscious pattern attempting to resist or control everything that is. The ego is formed and reformed each moment by aligning with the habit of not accepting or appreciating existence as it is. And this does include not loving yourself, your body, your friends, family, partner, and your experience of this life just the way it is. Now, if you tend to push, or rush through an experience, then how can appreciation be present? If you tend to push or rush through the experience, then how can appreciation be present? Rushing is an act of violence to your soul because your soul doesn't care about what time you're going to arrive. It trusts that God is guiding 
every step of the way. It comes down to deep eternal passion, right? Confidence, trust, and faith in oneself. And this universe. You are the universe. The universe is you. Wherever you look, if your eyes are open, you will see the divine. Alan Watts. Impatience is all about the ego trying to make the river of life flow faster. Impatience is all about the ego trying to make the river of life flow faster. It honestly thinks that once it gets through this experience of life, then the real goodies will arrive, and I will find, and I will finally become rich, fulfilled, successful, loved, deeply cherished, and free. The big joke is that the ego never arrives. It never finds inner peace because it's always wanting, wanting, wanting more. Our ego is a perpetual wanting machine. As if you have already noticed, you may have already noticed, your ego wants everything that it wants and how it wants it is right now. It's not excited to hang out and wait another day. It is like a spoiled child yelling at mom to fetch its favorite chocolate. It wants exactly what it wants, when it wants it. And not a moment later, it doesn't care whether the season is right. It just needs to be satisfied now or else. Misery does not exist in reality, but only in mere imagination, Ramana Marishi. Misery does not exist in reality, but only in mere imagination. By rushing to get rushing to get things done, we miss out on life. Our physical bodies become tired from the stress of perpetually hurrying. The mind narrows and blocks our creative visions and our souls miss out on feeling one with the cosmic orchestra of life. When we're rushing, we also block the flow of our manifesting vibration, causing things to manifest with more resistance, struggle, extra work, or perhaps never coming to fruition at all. The ego is impatient. And the soul is infinitely patient. And your experience of life all depends on which one you're listening to. Are you listening to the ego or the soul? The ego is impatient because it feels separate from this divine ocean of existence. This suffering is caused by years of believing that we are not connected to an infinite source of love. The ego is impatient because it feels separate from this divine ocean of existence. This suffering is caused by years of believing that we are not connected to an infinite source of love, intelligence, and power. The ego is obsessed with its private agendas. It has its own separate desires, schedule, and has completely forgotten about merging with God and thus experiencing instant bliss. Whenever the ego is in charge, we are unable to relax and welcome each new life experience. We miss the greater purpose of this life which is to celebrate life and ridiculously enjoy the freedom of living in this amazing, magical universe. Patience is the companion of wisdom, St. Augustine. 
Patience is the companion of wisdom. By practicing relaxing into each experience of your life, you will increase your manifesting vibration and attract your desires more effortlessly to you. Patience is a natural byproduct of the conscious manifesting process. When we are infinitely patient to manifest whatever our egos desire, as we make our request to the universe, it will easily manifest at record speeds. It is important to let go of attachment to our future outcome and patiently allow the universe to answer our requests. The most divine timing is waiting for us. Question is, can you relax enough to wait for it? You ever heard the term hurry up and wait? Hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. One of the best ways to master patience is learning how to live in a society in a relaxed, open, and receptive body. This means living in the world, yet not of the world. Living in the world, yet not of the world. Being connected to the big rat race, yet not rushing to get ahead of the other rat. Whenever we are late for an event, instead of rushing and freaking out about what might happen, enjoy the excitement of the journey getting there. Whenever we are late for an event, whatever it may be, instead of rushing and freaking out about what might happen, enjoy the excitement of the journey in getting there. Know that the, the, the more we rush, the more impatient energy we are creating. The more we rush in this life, the more impatient energy we are creating. Whenever we have to wait for someone, right? Whenever we have to wait for someone, instead of being impatient, Choose to see that you get to wait, right? Choose to see that you get to wait. This is your opportunity of the day to practice relaxing into your magical manifesting vehicle. Every time you have to wait, there's an opportunity to meditate. It's the universe offering you a deep, eternal, loving gift to take a mini vacation from pushing yourself and enjoying being at ease. Yeah, you get impatient, you're somewhere in the mirror where we've all been there. It's, it's, uh, it, it, none of us are exempt from it. But then we take a flip switch and we say, well, just not big deal. I'll just sit and meditate. I'll contemplate. Or I'll just sit and talk to myself about how grateful I am for the very moment, for the bench or the seat I'm sitting on, for my surroundings, for all the things going on. Anything, anything we can't control is teaching us how to let go. Anything we can't control is teaching us how to let go. Do you know why we mostly, most of us, the majority of us, and, and I, it isn't conscious, it's subconscious, or maybe even unconscious. We feel more secure when we're in control, right? When things so-called get out of control, where things where you don't have control and you know it, what happens? Fear, worry, stress, anxiety hmm? of the unknown. What's going to happen? You don't know, do you? 
You don't know what's going to happen because you're not in control. Anything you can't control is teaching you how to let go. So if you, you, you look at something, you say, what? I, don't, I don't care to have control of this. I'm going with the flow. Going with the flow doesn't mean you're lazy or you're incompetent. Those are all ego mind things that come up. It means you're letting go so that you can relax. You, you act upon something and you want to control it and you realize that you're not able to control it, you just let it go. Leave it to the universe. When we wait, it allows us to, to deeply sink into a vast spaciousness where we can taste the beauty of our infinite souls. Waiting is just a form of meditation. It really is. Doing nothing means your mind and heart are completely in the now and not focused on the past or the future. And receiving the divine, deep, eternal love of existence. Be patient and all the goodies you desire will spring forth into existence might be in a, a form of, a, you know, something comes by, you can bring it in and take action, participate in something, do something that connects you to something that connects you to something. Now, we can make statements to ourselves. We can, you know, uh, out loud or within, you may want to try something. Wake up tomorrow morning and consciously choose to meditate for 15 minutes on the idea that you are infinite, eternal, and will never die. Okay? And that's what you are focused on. that you are infinite, eternal, and will never die. We're talking about the God within the body. Return to this awareness throughout your day, and you'll experience a tremendous shift in your ability to be patient and also see an increase in your manifesting abilities, because we all have them. You can see the step-by-step -step process. You can feel it of the awakening. For humanity. This awakening is underfoot. Some in this lifetime will be aware. Others won't. It'll be other lifetimes. The transition of this civilization, society, is in massive full swing. You'll notice that time element, right, has greatly increased. Which, what? What does it do? See, there's, there's a gray area there because when time is accelerated, what happens to a lot of us? We become what? Rushed, hurried, under pressure. Don't we? So we feel this. Because what? What else happens? The ego mind comes in and says, and, and then you say, you don't have enough time to get everything done. What are you going to do? You don't have control of everything. What are you going to do? It's like, oh me, oh my. Instead of just Stepping back, taking a wonderful breath in through the nose and a wonderful breath out through the mouth, and slowing down. Now, what does all of that do usually to people? Okay? It speeds you up. And then you get that rush. 
of exasperation or disappointment because you didn't get it done. Now, it's interesting. You could be in a starship and you could be traveling at 50 million miles a second. But you don't enjoy anything. You're, you're from point A to point B. It's pretty much bottom line. Getting somewhere faster. Interstellar space. That's what it's all about. Getting somewhere faster. Getting from point A to point B faster. And it's all about faster. It isn't just Earth. It is all the species throughout existence that and beyond that are rushing. They're rushing. Now, there's some species that don't rush at all. They know. Their accumulated wisdom through experience of lives has taught them. Have you ever noticed on this planet? Always a schedule, isn't there? If you don't have a schedule, if you don't, you make one. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to put a, uh, a chart on the wall and mark everything and just do this, direct you, a director chart where it directs you what to do, when to do it, what to get done, your list of chores, your list of goals, your list of this, your list of that. It's very difficult for us to go with the flow to go with the universal flow of creation. To sit back and enjoy life. And then some people say, well, how can, how do you, how can, how can they experience, how can they enjoy life? When the rent's due, they're three months behind their rent, they, you know, food's cost, and gasoline, and, transportation issues, and all this stuff because they've chosen to step into the storm and they don't even know it. We all know what the storm is. We all know it. We've all been there more than once. The storm is what's happening around us. It's always there. And a lot of us get so tied up with the ego mind, we just step right into it. Then we become, then we begin to suffer, and we're in yesterday or tomorrow all the time, we're worried about tomorrow and worried about yesterday. We're stressing either way, forward or backward. And see, the ego mind is very formidable because it will do everything it can to keep you worried, stressed, and feared. Fearing, worrying, stressing. Because it wants, it wants what it wants, and it's gonna, it wants it now. It's like on the planet today, in this very now, the society has been trained, and many people have been trained, that they, when they want something, they want it now, instantaneous. They, they don't go into all that's involved with it and enjoy all that and then understand what patience is, a form of meditation, and how many times have you found yourself through life, right, or what to someone else, get irritated because things, because the way they wanted even standing in line getting an ice cream cone, right? Very simple. But because it's taking so much time, they get irritated. You ever, you've ever been in that position or have you ever witnessed anybody in that? Let's go. This is too long. It's taking too long. Well, wait a minute. Let's just sit a bit. Nah, let's go. That's where the ego mind has gripped one supremely.
instead of enjoying the time we have in these bodies. We miss so much. We really do. We miss, we miss this life. We miss the target. It's to enjoy life. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It really doesn't. The money comes. You, it manifests. It's like you run out of money, you go make more. You figure out how to do it. You enjoy things, you get what you want. You want something, you get it. If it takes your last penny, then you figure out, oh, okay. So let's, let's, work, let's look at how we're going to make more, bring in more abundance and wealth. You manifest it. We're, we're equipped with everything beyond our wildest imagination. We just don't know it. Isn't that amazing? We're such amazing beings, and we don't know that we are. We just, we just don't know it. It isn't a crime. It isn't a mess up or a mistake. It's just we just don't know. Totally oblivious to it. And we've been trained so long being in these bodies to think a certain way, be a certain way, act a certain way, respond a certain way. That's, ex that's acceptable. Right? You ever wanted to be wild and crazy from the standpoint of stepping outside your comfort zone, doing something that you, you would not do, okay? You just wouldn't do it. But you're intrigued by it. You've always been intrigued by it. You, say, you know, I wonder what that would be like. Why do you think we're here to experience? We're not, we, we, we didn't come into these bodies as the gods that we are to establish a little comfort circle and stay in that circle the rest of our existence in that body. Hey, Jill, you want to go here? No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And as, as these bodies age, and we're in them longer, right, we become more and more withdrawn, more and more stuck in the circle of comfort that we've established for ourselves that we don't know is basically ego mind. So we, we start to step outside that circle. Too uncomfortable, too scary, you know? No, nah, I'm okay. I'm okay doing what I'm doing. And then you get you get to a stage maybe where you you decide to do something and it just blows up. It's it 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 wasn't pleasant. Okay. And then you say I'm not doing that again. Instead of looking at it and see how you would have manifested. How many times have you been afraid of something? I, you know, going from childhood all the way up to now, how many times did you probably wouldn't tell anybody else, but to yourself you were afraid. You're afraid of something, right? You know you're afraid of it, whatever it may be. Thought, you know, an interaction. And instead of being afraid of it, look at it and say, what am I... Why am I afraid of this? Oh, let's look at this. Let's meditate on this. What, why would I be afraid of this? Why is it gnawing at me? See, we don't do that. We just It's like a knee-jerk reaction. We fear something. So we ignore it, right? So we do. We put it in the closet or hope it goes away or... See, the true happiness is that when we continually work with work within, we go within in a joyous way, we begin to let go. And it, 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 it 
in most cases, it, you don't just say let go and it's gone. Sometimes it comes back and you say, yeah, I have no need for that. I don't care to engage with that. I don't care to have that happen. Because every time you focus on something and you say you do not want, you're going to get it. That's different from worrying, okay? That's a big difference from worrying. You see, worry is, is a useless expansion, expand, expending of energy because when we worry, it doesn't usually happen anyway. But when we focus on something that we don't want, we get it. We're going to get it. And then when we focus on what we do want, we're going to get that. So you just say, well, I don't really care to focus on what I don't want. I'm going to practice focusing on what I do want. Well, that's a good, that's a good commitment to oneself. It is. But it's got to be constantly reinforced. Okay? We, we have to constantly reinforce it. It's just practice it. You just come back to it, come back to it, come back to it, come back to it. It's like, have you ever had, okay, you, you, you have, a, you, you eat it, you know, you, you, maybe you go someplace you eat and you have these habits that you form. You're only going to have this, you're only going to eat that, da, 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 okay? And then you come across a situation where you're presented with a whole different menu and avenue, say, and you, you don't have the old menu. You've got this, this new one that's totally foreign and strange to you. You have no idea what any of this food's going to taste like at all because you've never had it before. Okay? Now, you're not going to sit there because you were looking forward to it, right? You're not going to sit there and say, oh, I'm not hungry. You see, so you... You're going to go. I'm going to. I, I guess I'm going to try something. Now this is outside your comfort zone. If you're in a situation. You say, oh, why not? Throw caution to the wind. I'm going to, I'm going to try something on here and see what it's like. What's what? You know, if I don't like it, fine. I won't eat it again. But if I do like it, it'll take me on a whole different path. So you order something, right? And the person there has had this menu, and they make some suggestions and stuff. But, but we're, we all have our, you know, little little teeny and little teeny differences. And so, you order something. You have no idea what's going to taste like. You have no idea if you're going to like it. But you're not concerned about it. You're just going with the flow. It's an adventure. So you're served this. And your first bite, you go, holy cow, because you're not used to it. You're only used to, remember, you're only used to your menu, the one that you practice. And, you know, you go someplace and say, well, I'm going to order this. And I, okay. Or I'm going to order that, and I'm comfortable and familiar with that. But this one, you aren't. And lo and behold, you take your first bite, and you think it's absolutely marvelous, wonderful. You could have taken your first bite, and it was horrible. But you take your first bite, it's absolutely marvelous, it's wonderful. And then you're motivated to go further into that cuisine. Now, you could have said no, had some water or some bread or something. But you said yes, and it opens up a whole new world. This is what a lot of us do we get so tied up in this circle, this comfort area through this life. And we, and we all eventually establish it. And some might say it's a rut. Doing the same thing every day, eating the same thing every day, not trying anything new, not expanding our horizons from the standpoint of experiencing. Because we feel it's safe through the ego mind. And it isn't a bad thing. These are things that we take, uh, we embrace, and we go with. And 
And it's like, do you really believe that we ever retire? What a word, retire. We don't. We don't ever retire. And in these bodies, the more we are active in these bodies, the longer, in most cases, we stay in them. Keep active. Keep the blood going. Got to get the blood going. Got to get the blood flowing. Whether it's a brisk walk or standing in one place and moving your feet, is get the blood going. Move the blood through the body. Simple thing. doesn't take hours and of grueling exercise, but it gets your blood flowing. I can guarantee you, you sit somewhere for a long period of time. You try to get even young people sitting and playing video games. They're talking in their teens, right? And they play video games for eight hours straight, and it's been, it has been known on occasion where when they get up and they start moving around, they've been sitting so long and the blood has been stagnant, you know, sitting in one place long, that they have a heart attack. Say, always do something. Move your legs or move your feet. Get up and walk around for 15 minutes or something like that. These are all avenues. See, we're, we're managing the body and have an intimate relationship with it. We're looking at our lives in the moment, in the now. So we're not stretched and pulled and rushed and prodded. We're at ease. We're flowing. We aren't concerned about controlling every single thing in our lives, if any. When you start trying to control things, you're going to get in that boat, that raft, fighting upstream all the way. When you get in the other boat with no oars and you lay back in the lounge and you just let that that current take you, it's effortless. And then, interesting, it takes you to the unknown where all the possibilities are. I'll join you in the meditation, and I'll return to close us out.
take an easy and slow breath in through the nose with an easy and slow breath out of the mouth. Remain still. Give yourself completely over to love and you will always feel at home. Take refuge in your heart. Relax deeply here in silence. And let the mind simply rest. Dive into the ocean of love within. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern, continue our time for change call, and Thursday. to continue our global guided meditation call. Be good to yourselves. Kind, generous, humble, and concentrate. Choose to focus on what you want and choose to focus on gratitude. Gratitude.